Soul Gold is a top discovery of the past decade. Derek Azubo was recently hired as CEO to take use of his mine operations experience and advance the project. Daryl, welcome to Kitco. Thank you, Michael. Good to be here. Uh, Daryl, firstly, frame up the size of the project for us, please. Yeah, so look, we've got a number of um, exploration concessions through Ecuador, but the most advanced one is what we call Cascabel. And this is like 2.6 billion tonnes at 0.53% copper equivalent, which basically is uh, 10 million tonnes or just under of contained uh, copper. So it's a really big asset. Um, and then we've got other uh, copper assets that we're exploring at the moment. Can you take, uh, can you compare that against uh, other similar types of projects? Because uh, there really is nothing really of this magnitude. Yeah, look, um, the way I would do trying to dimension is we're releasing a pre-feasibility study in a few months' time, and that, that will properly dimension it. But it you'll find that it's a, a, a medium-sized mine, but it is very low cost. It will be very low cost with a, a life of mine that goes beyond 50 years. The pre-feasibility study date is approximately uh, when, Daryl? Yeah, so we said to the market, quarter two of this year, and we're on track to deliver that. You are a mining operations expert with Stins at BHP's Olympic Dam. Uh, what's block caving and why is it suitable for Sol Gold? Yeah, look, I would say block caving is the, it's a relatively new mining methodology. And it's, uh, it's an incredibly smart methodology where you can use it because you basically use Mother Nature to do a lot of the, uh, uh, the heavy lifting for you. You basically, uh, it uh, allows the mass of the rock to break up the rock. It uses gravity to move the rock. So you end up with a very, very low cost and reliable operation. Now, uh, some miners have had uh, tough sledding in Latin America. Uh, I think uh, Mexico and Chile do come to mind. How supportive is Ecuador of miners? Yeah, look, that's a very timely question. We met with the Ecuador president, President Lasso, last week. He's very supportive. Um, he's driving an agenda, um, opening up the country for investment uh, in an environmentally, socially responsible way. And we found him, we met him last week and he was very supportive, keen to understand how he can help, happy to talk to our investors directly so they hear directly from him the sort of support that we had. So we could not ask for more. Both in word and action, uh, President Lasso is open for business. How's the community around uh, the uh, project, uh, Daryl? Yeah, look, I would say um, I'm obviously new to Soul Gold, but the people before me have done a fantastic job um, the last 10 years, really building that trust with the community, doing a number of community projects. I met with the president of the two local communities, and you can tell that they trust us, they appreciate what we've been doing. Um, they appreciate the, some of the roads that we put in, which we've had to use for drilling how to join their local communities. And they see that Cascavel is an opportunity that doesn't just bring jobs for them, but for generations to come. Now, before your tenure, uh, Soul Gold and Cornerstone uh, were sniping at each other until they signed a cooperation pact. Um, Daryl, are all the major shareholders of Soul Gold pulling together? Yeah, look, um, I met with um, the CEO of Cornerstone just before Christmas. I'm actually meeting with him again next week. Uh, yeah, for sure. I think there's a there's an open relationship there. Uh, we're heavily invested uh, in the obviously the Cascabel project. Um, I also met with Newcrest actually on day one in the role and and BHP soon after. So look, we've got a lot of aligned interests. It makes sense that we work together to see how we fully um, exploit this opportunity and and de risk it. Uh Outside of advancing the project and moving towards a pre-feasibility study, um, your chair uh, said at a recent conference that Soul Gold needs to better market itself in the North America market. Uh, why is that necessary and what's the marketing plan? Oh, look, um, if you look at the Toronto Stock Exchange, um, you know, all major mining investors uh, have a heavy presence in Toronto. And the reality is we're underrepresented there. So we're looking to put in a shelf perspective so we can be more active on the Toronto Stock Exchange. 
I want to step back and look at the industry as a whole, uh, Daryl. Uh, the automotive sector is worried about supply of commodity and other components. We did see that in uh, Tesla where it had its uh, year end uh, yesterday. If a major car executive asked you how to increase metal supply quickly, what would you say? Yeah, so that's a good question. It really depends on the, uh, the type of mining. And this is where I think uh, Solgold, we're very fortunate. We have over 3,000 square kilometres of exploration concessions right through um, Ecuador. They will pick up underground mines as well as uh, surface open cut mines. So the only way you can bring on new copper quickly is if you have at your disposal um, surface copper mines that have been, been approved. Um, the second cab off the rank for us is a project called Port Vanier. And that is such a such a project that it's got all that comes to the surface, um, and we're looking to take that into what's called PA post economic or preliminary economic assessment. Um, but that's as Porvin is the sort of project that you can bring on stream relatively quickly. We've seen margin compression uh, due to labor and fuel costs. Uh, you had a stint at uh, Orica, which is a major explosive supplier and a major cost for miners. Uh, what are you seeing? Yeah, look, we are seeing, um, look, I think we, we're all seeing the, the seeds of inflationary pressures. Clearly, there's a fair amount of concern around that. But, you know, when you're in copper, you've actually got a natural hedge because often the drivers of inflation are, are usually the same for increased consumption of, of copper. And I think in our case, it's going to be a double whammy because as we move more to, to renewables, as we move more to electric vehicles, um, and as investment in those areas increases, we're going to see an escalating impact in the demand for copper. So I think that bodes well. So if we see inflationary pressures on the cost side, I think we'll see even more um, upward pressure on the, on the copper uh, price outlook. On the equipment side, uh, where you're talking about uh, your trucks and uh, your milling equipment, um, are equipment suppliers able to keep up because of these uh, supply constraints right now? Because there's a lot of capital expenditure going on right now in mining. Yeah, look, um, we will get into that in the next phase, which is what we call definitive feasibility study phase. However, I don't expect that to be an issue for us. If, if we had a shallow surface mine to get up, I would be very concerned about equipment supply being on the critical path. But being an underground mine where development uh, drives the, the critical path, I, I just cannot see how equipment supply will be, will be our primary challenge there. Daryl, last question. Uh, outside of uh, the marketing in North America, outside of the pre-feasibility study, uh, what's the exploration program at Solgold? Yeah, look, um, as I mentioned earlier, we've got over 3,000 square kilometres We've got the first mover advantage. Like we really have a strong presence. Um, so at the moment, um, you know, we've had six drill rigs going, and it's really prioritising the areas that we see as most um, prospectus. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Paul Veneer is shaping up to be quite an attractive deposit, and that's the next cab of the rank that we will take um, forward into an economic assessment, and we'll keep on drilling at our other key projects until we get to a size where we can also take them to a, an economic assessment. But what I want, I'd like uh, people to appreciate is yes, we've got Cascabel, which is an incredibly uh, long life, low cost tier one mine, but that's just the first of a number that we expect to bring to the market. Daryl, thanks for your time. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. He's Daryl Kazubo. He is CEO of Soul Gold. My name is Michael McRae and you're watching Kiko Mining. <laughs>